Welcome back everyone, this is going to be my video for the new House of the Dragon first look video that HBO released for the Game of Thrones prequel series. There are several new characters filming some special scenes from the events of the Dance of the Dragons, which is the story that the prequel will be based on. I will be doing all the episodes for the Game of Thrones prequel series just like I did for the main show, so if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe to get those. I will do some special giveaways when we get a little bit closer to the show coming out too. There are still several other Game of Thrones prequel series and spin-offs that they're working on set during different time periods that I'll mention at the end of the video, but this Dance of the Dragons show is the first one we'll actually get episodes for, and currently the expected release date is around April, spring next year, 2022. I believe they're looking to occupy the same time of year that the original Game of Thrones series had. There's also some practical reasons for when they have to start airing episodes in order for the show to be eligible for the Emmys, so that's why April is probably when it'll start. They'll have 10 episodes per season like the main show originally had for at least the first several seasons. And I believe that HBO and the showrunners have said that they have at least a five year contract in place for a five season plan, just hoping that it will run longer than that. But right now they're planning for five seasons. On all shows, when they go beyond a certain point, they have to renegotiate the actors' contracts and all the creative talent, everybody that works on the show. So if they go beyond five seasons for some of these Game of Thrones prequels, it'll be the same situation. You also probably saw that they signed George R. Martin to a special development deal for high eight figures. I think it's like mid high eight figures for him to stay on and help them develop all these prequel series and guide the writing in a way that he didn't in the last couple of seasons of Game of Thrones. He helped them write a lot of the earlier seasons of Game of Thrones, but after about season four, he ran into issues with trying to finish Winds of Winter, which he's still trying to finish. Now he's back on board, helping them guide all these other prequel series they're developing just to make sure that they don't go off the rails. But the first look teasers they just released reveal some cool details about what they're filming right now. It doesn't mean they're filming the opening scene of episode one right here. They filmed the scenes in the episodes out of order, but this is all footage from episode one. And obviously the footage of the opening title scene there is the Targaryen sigil, Fire and Blood, because the Dance of the Dragons is all about the Targaryen family. But they grouped the previews in three different photos because they represent the main factions of the series, or they will become the main factions during the Dance of the Dragons conflict that serves as the backbone of the series. There is the lead up to the actual conflict. It's sort of like the main show on Game of Thrones. You have the War of the Five Kings, you have the Battle for the Iron Throne, then we had the War for the Dawn. So you have a series of smaller conflicts, bigger conflicts, the lead up to all that, and then the aftermath. So the actual Dance of the Dragons conflict itself, the actual Targaryen Civil War, only lasted for a couple years. So I know people were kind of wondering how they're going to turn that into a five season show. Well, part of the way they're going to do that is not speed running the plot, skipping over every possible thing they can. Just to put it into perspective, if they'd have done everything from George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire novels on the main show, it would have taken them like 15 to 20 seasons to get through all the plot. But the actual Targaryen Civil War, the Dance of the Dragons, took place about 170 years before the events on the main show, just to chart the timeline. So none of the characters from the main show were alive during this period, with the exception of the Night King, although technically he's not alive, he's undead. Maybe a couple of the White Walkers were around in this period that were still around in present day, but for the most part, the White Walkers that you see serving underneath the Night King are actually all Gilly's brothers. Remember, Craster made the pact with the Night King in exchange for clemency, so he gave him all the sons that were born to him, and Gilly was one of his daughters that he later married. It was this whole big thing. But a couple years after the official end of the Dance of the Dragons, both Brynden Rivers, the Blood Raven, aka the Three-Eyed Raven, and Maester Aemon Targaryen, his nephew, were born. Maester Aemon was born about 23 years after the Three-Eyed Raven. So with the exception of the Children of the Forest, who are all extremely long-lived before they all wind up dying on the main show, the Three-Eyed Raven is technically the oldest living person on the planet that we know of. Remember, the Night King does not count because he's not alive. But the Night King during this period was relatively dormant during the events of the Dance of the Dragons. He is around, he is up in the lands of always winter, but he's not quite as active as he becomes during the events of the main show. So there might be some references or Easter eggs towards the end of whichever season winds up being the last season of the show, but I don't expect them to reference the White Walkers that much. We will have Starks. They will say winter is coming because that is their house motto. Starks tend to say that. But the main factions that you see here are Olivia Cook as Alicent Hightower and Reese Ephons as Otto Hightower, her father. Alicent became the second wife of King Viserys, who's being played by Patty Considine. If you haven't seen him, he's not in any of these previews. He's not around for the scene that they're filming right now, but he is alive when the show picks up. 
He remarried to her after his first wife died without leaving him a male heir. But before she died, they did have a daughter together who you see in these pictures. That's Rhaenyra Targaryen, the woman you see standing next to Matt Smith's character, who is Daemon Targaryen. He's the younger brother of the current king, Viserys I. The important thing about these two factions, though, is that Otto Hightower and Prince Daemon here, Matt Smith's character, were bitter rivals in King's Landing. Otto Hightower used to be the Hand of the King, but was fired, essentially, by Viserys for demanding that he name all of Queen Alicent's children, the presumptive heirs to the throne, over his oldest daughter, Rhaenyra. And even though King Viserys went so far as to make a proclamation naming Rhaenyra, his oldest daughter, his heir presumptive, Prince Daemon, his younger brother, actually saw himself as the presumptive heir because he was the closest living male relative to Viserys. So even though it might seem weird that they're suddenly a faction together in the Dance of the Dragons, like if he wanted to be heir over her, why is he siding with her in this big war of succession? We have to think the enemy of my enemy is my friend. But all through her life, King Viserys raised Rhaenyra, training her in matters of state, taking her to small council meetings, basically teaching her how to be a good ruler. So had there been no Targaryen civil war and she ascended the throne, she actually probably would have been a great queen. But had he wanted to, Daemon would still have legal cause to challenge her claim to the throne if it had come to that eventually, had Viserys not gotten remarried and actually had a son. But eventually Viserys does get remarried to Alicent Hightower and within a couple of years of that she does give him a son who they name Aegon II. This other character that you see here is Lord Corlys Valerion, known as the Sea Snake. He's part Targaryen through his Valerian bloodline. The Valerians are a vassal house of House Targaryen sworn to Dragonstone, so they have a lot of the Valerian blood flowing through their veins as well. The Sea Snake is actually a really cool character. He's actually known as the richest person in Westeros, far richer than the Lannisters. Most of his wealth comes from trade, the sea, and expeditions that he goes on. They call him the Sea Snake. He is basically master of the seas. You have to imagine him as like a boss level upgrade to someone like Euron Greyjoy. Without being the crazy douchebag pirate that Euron was. The seat of the Valerian house is on Driftmark and that's where this place is where they're filming this scene. But even though he's pictured separately, he's not a different faction. He's essentially part of Rhaenyra's faction in the war, the Dance of the Dragons. So the two main factions are mostly referred to as the Blacks and the Greens. And no, that's not a reference to the color of their dragons, because there are many different colors of dragons alive during this period. Alicent Hightower represents the Greens and Rhaenyra the Blacks because as their relationship at court began to sour over time and people started to pick sides in the matters of succession, there was a great tourney held to mark the fifth anniversary of King Viserys' remarriage to Alicent, Alicent showed up at the tourney in a green dress, Rhaenyra showed up wearing a black dress, so the two main factions were named for the color of their dresses, because essentially this is a Targaryen civil war being fought between Princess Rhaenyra and the new queen, Alicent. So you have a war of the princess and the queen and the rest of the seven kingdoms picking different sides. But they didn't start out as enemies, they were actually friends for a long time. Once Alicent was old enough, she was actually sent to court and grew up alongside Rhaenyra. They had a relatively positive relationship for most of that period, and it really wasn't until King Viserys named Rhaenyra his heir, then later remarried to Alicent, had a son with her, but then did not name the new son Aegon II the new heir. That's really when things start to go south between the two women. So he has a new wife with a male heir, which traditionally you would pick the male heir to be your successor, but he still wants the daughter from his first marriage to take the Iron Throne when he dies. And it's really his death that sets off the actual war. Like you have the death of Robert Baratheon leading to the War of the Five Kings. It's a similar situation. King Viserys I dies in that same year is when the actual Dance of the Dragons begins. Because when he dies, by that time, his son, Aegon II, had actually grown up a little bit. He seizes the throne for himself, declaring that because he is a male heir to the former king, his claim to the Iron Throne is stronger than Rhaenyra's, who's a woman. Technically, he's not wrong, but kings were allowed to break those rules when it suited them. They could name their own heir if they wanted to, but there was always ways to legally challenge that after the king's death. And it wasn't a situation that happened very often, with one important exception, which I'll explain because it's related to the scene that they're actually filming in all these preview scenes that they released. The scene that they're filming here seems like it's related to the funeral of Lena Valerion, the daughter of Corlys Valerion, the person here in the other preview. She died about nine years before the actual conflict of the Dance of the Dragons. And around this time is when this big chain of events happens where a bunch of heirs to the throne wind up dying, kind of complicating things further, leading to the Dance of the Dragons. But the reason why this scene is actually really important is because it foreshadows some of the events that will happen on the show. 
the story of Lena's life actually plays out similarly to what will eventually happen to Rhaenyra's character. They both had similar problems with the line of succession in the Iron Throne, because for a little while, Lena was actually the heir presumptive to the original King Jaehaerys I, but her father, the former heir to the Iron Throne, died while she was still in the womb. So instead of letting the throne just pass to her once she was born, King Jaehaerys I named his next oldest son the heir, Prince Balon, and his son wound up being Paddy Considine's King Viserys I, who succeeded him a little while later. So all these heirs to the throne, all these different people are dying and coming along within the span of about 10 years leading up to the events of the Dance of the Dragons, so it's getting really, really complicated around this time. But remember that when the show picks up in season one, King Viserys Paddy Considine's character is still alive. My early prediction is that he's going to wind up being their Sean Bean, Ned Stark of the series, being this super important character when the show begins because he's the current king, he sits on the Iron Throne, only for them to kill him off really quickly after the show picks up, setting off the new, old battle for the Iron Throne. In the same way that Robert Baratheon's death, former king, and then Ned Stark's death set off the War of the Five Kings. Only instead of the War of the Five Kings, this time it's the War of the Princess and the New Queen, or the Blacks and the Greens. The other really big difference on a practical level between this show and the main show when that picked up is that originally if you remember the way they treated the dragons, like each season you saw a little more of the dragons, the dragons got bigger. This time we start out with really big dragons and there are many dragons, not just three. Special effects have also gotten a lot better, so imagine the way they portrayed the dragons in the last couple of seasons, it'll be a little bit more like that when you see giant aerial dragon battles happening during the actual war, the Dance of the Dragons, the actual conflict itself. We'll get a much better idea for how they're going to pace things out and where things pick up in season one once they drop that first trailer. There'll probably be some footage later this year because they just started filming. For the most part, the schedule of when they release stuff, when they release trailers, when we start seeing episodes airing, it's going to be the same as it was in the original seasons of Game of Thrones. Let me know in the comments if there are any special videos you want me to do for the series or big questions that you want me to answer. And if you guys didn't see it, there's a big Game of Thrones reunion happening during the Marvel Eternals movie. We have Jon Snow being reunited with Rob Stark, Richard Madden. Remember, they never actually met each other after this moment on the show. And they said the next time we meet, you'll be dressed all in black because Jon was taking the black. And Kit Harington is playing the Black Knight during that movie. You can click here for my Eternals trailer video, that big Marvel Phase 4 trailer video. And click here for all my other Game of Thrones videos and House of the Dragon videos. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys tonight.